Hey guys, it's me, Pieri. This is Face Off episode 15. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for this one. This is the 5800X3D versus the 7800X3D. Unless you've been living under a rock, you know that the X3Ds are the kings of gaming CPUs. I'm like a broken record all over my channel, in my Discord, in the comments, saying how the 5800X3D's value will never be beaten and will never be matched again, ever. I just don't think that these kinds of breakthroughs happen very often and we're very lucky to be benefiting from it right now, in my opinion. Now, while the 5800X3D is the best value for being, for still being in the elite ballpark for performance, the 7800X3D now offers an even higher level of performance than the previous 5000. So hopefully this video helps you determine whether or not that jump is worth it for you if you're an EFT player. So I'm sure you guys know all the specs and all that. If you don't, just go Google it or chat GPT it. I'm going to roll side-by-side -side footage of the two chips in Escape from Tarkov on factory and streets in 1080, 1440, and 4K in low, ultra settings, and my pure optimized settings. After the footage for each resolution plays, I'm going to show a statistical comparison and share a little bit of analysis. So check the timestamps for those. This is a pretty long video, so make use of those timestamps. <laughs> No, no, please.
notable observations about factory and 1080 between the two. The 5800X3D drops off in performance once you kick up the textures a little bit, even if you optimize the settings as you can see from ultra to pure. With the 7800X3D, there is no drop off no matter what settings you do in 1080. Second is the difference in 1% as you can see here. The averages are a good 10 to 20% apart. Couple things on the CPU side that I want to note. The 5800X3D draws a little more power close to the 60, close to 60, close to 60 watts. Just hovering, hovering in the high 50s, close to 60 watts. And the temperature was consistently around 50. For the 7800X3D, the power draw was around 53 average, and then the temp was around 60 to 62. So it was kind of a little flip-flop there. A little higher power draw and lower temp on the 5800X3D. A little lower power draw on the 7800X3D, but higher temps. Alright, so apparently I used the wrong GPU uses metric on the 7800X3D runs. So I'm only going to show the power and temp comparisons here. If you want to see usage comparisons, I'll do some more in the future. I am not going to go and do another 18 runs here. On streets, there are a few more assets, so the numbers are going to be lower. It stresses the CPU a little more. So you can see here. The average between low and ultra on the 5800X3D, there's a difference of 7. On the 7000 series, there's a difference of 5. So in 1080, not much of a difference between the settings. Looking at the CPU stats, it pretty much mirrors what we saw on factory. Around 60 watts for the 5000 series, and then around 50 degrees, and then vice versa for the 7000 low 50s for power draw and around 60 for the temp. Okay on my limited GPU stat you can see that the 7000 series draws a lot more power 30 more watts on low around 70 more watts on ultra and even on the pure optimized settings it's drawing 40 more watts. In general though the temps are hanging around 60 on the 7000 and fluctuates between 50 and 60 for the 5000. Looks like it's getting CPU limited on Ultra.
Okay, so looking at factory 2K, doesn't really matter what the settings are for the 5800X3D, they're going to be, the stats are about the same across the board, looks like it's CPU bottleneck there at 2K. 7800X3D, kind of the same deal, it's hitting kind of the same marks on low and ultra. The pure settings is actually the worst. Uh, I'm going to chalk that up to Tarkov RNG because you can see between low and ultra there isn't really a difference so it shouldn't really look like that but I left the stats there just to kind of show just, just to leave an example of Tarkov RNG. Now I'm only doing one run each on these so that's why there can be variance between the runs. I'm sure if I did three runs each or something like that the numbers would even out but even still I did 18 recorded runs on each processor and each one wasn't in one take so it was a hell of a lot of recording um, I'm gonna chalk this one up to Tarkov RNG okay moving on to CPU stats kind of the same deal numbers are gonna numbers are Kind of the same deal, numbers are even across the board and reflect the same thing we've been seeing. Not much to talk about here, nothing really to note. So on the GPU power and temp comparisons, you can see that the 7800X3D is again pulling more power and it's relative to the amount of frames that it's producing comparatively so it's needing to pull more power because it has more headroom on the CPU which allows the GPU to stretch its legs a little more on the 7000 series. Okay looking at the FPS numbers in 2k on streets going from low to ultra on both systems results in about a 10 to 15 percent loss in average and max FPS and if you look at the pure optimized settings they actually match the low numbers so it's still on high textures I lower the shadows to low but visually it looks pretty close to ultra so a little plug for pure settings there CPU numbers look pretty much identical to 1080 not much to talk about here for GPU temp and power again the 7000 series is drawing anywhere between 20 to 30 percent more power and also providing 20 to 30 percent it's drawing anywhere between 20 again the 7000 series is drawing probably anywhere between 20 to 30 percent more power and it's providing I'd say about 15 to 20 percent more performance as well No, no, please. Never. Сука ты, блядь, не упырь, блядь, гнида. Ah! <laughs> 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 
Откройте, капец тебе, служивый! Давай, мочи! Вот ху!
are now at 4K. The 5800X3D maxes out around 166 average, 200 max in low. The 7800X3D is around 197, 229, and 147 comparatively. Now the interesting thing here is that between the 5000 and 7000 on Ultra, the numbers are pretty much exactly the same. So that means it's still bottlenecked in 4K Ultra whether you're on the 5000 or the 7000. Now when I drop down to pure settings, the 7000 can handle a little bit more FPS max. But on Ultra, as you can see, they're still bottlenecked the same. Looking at CPU numbers, pretty much again exactly the same thing we've been seeing. Around 60 watts of power on the 5800X3D while being around 50 degrees and then flip flop for the 7000. And looking at GPU numbers, the important thing to see here is that the 5000 and 7000 have the exact same temp and power draw on Ultra while they vary when the settings are lowered. As you can see again, the 7000 giving about 20 to 30 percent more performance in low. On Ultra, you can see the 5800X3D is getting bottlenecked pretty bad here. There are a lot more assets on streets than there are on factory, so the 7000 has a little bit of a lead on it in Ultra, but not as much as I expected, to be honest. In terms of the CPU and GPU numbers, it's followed the exact same pattern as the previous results, so not much to talk about here. Alright fellas, that's going to do it for me. Hopefully this information is helpful for you to determine yourself whether or not the jump from a 5000X3D is worth it to a 7000X3D. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Visit my website purology.com or join my Discord. The link is in my video description or you can even shoot me a message directly. My username is Puri. As always, I want to thank you for spending some of your time here. Hopefully you got some good information out of it. Have a great day.